So earlier today, we were at Youth Man's house, and we got to hear the three RF7s, his uh, four surrounds, and these uh, four sailing speakers. And uh, I know he didn't have his personal SVS PB Ultra 16s behind the screen, which was fine. However, we got to hear the JTR, uh, I believe they're called the S2s, and oh my goodness, you guys. When Michael talks about a difference in a ported sub and a sealed sub, it's it's something serious, okay? Uh, you kind of have to be there to hear it. Uh, obviously, you don't have to worry about port chuffing. You don't have to worry about any of that, which is flawless. When we heard the first demo of the Dolby Atmos mix, I really, really, guys, really am just wanting to <laughs> spend so much money on getting speakers like that just because they, they sound terrific. Um, you know, I asked him what he had his crossover set to. Uh, he said he had the speaker set over to about 80 hertz and the surround set a little higher. Uh, my thoughts on the, the, the speakers themselves, um, I didn't like them. I love them. <laughs> Guys, they sound... It's, it's incredible. He's using speakers behind that screen that are 30, 40 years old. And obviously sound is speaker technology itself doesn't really change, and that's okay. Uh, the three La Scala's uh, left, center, and right, very well balanced, not boomy at all. And they're not going to be, guys, at 80 hertz. They're, they're just not going to be. It's not, it's not any bass really going to them at all because the subwoofers are, you know, in charge of that. Um, and that's a fair crossover point, especially when you have either dual 15s like what he has for his personal subwoofers or... The JTR is like what he has in for a review. Um, I'm not going to say that it was, you know, a perfect sound stage. And the reason why I say that is because, again, the Lascalas are very direct, right? Just like this speaker here. Uh, it's a very direct sounding speaker. The, the surrounds that he uses um, are a wide dispersion speaker. So those will have a six and a half inch woofer and a, I uh, believe, a soft dome tweeter firing on one side and it's the same thing on the other side. So again, guys, you're not going to get that, that direct sound like what I have from my surround speakers and I can show you guys that um, in another video and I'll send what I use here to you know his channel. You guys can check that out. Um, my channel is not about home theater. It's going Disney World live. It's pretty much that. But anyway, um, so I think if he ever were to switch that up, um, it would probably blend in uh, with the speakers a little bit better. But I'm not saying that the sound is bad because, guys, it is not. Um, regardless, you still hear the, the surround effects, you know, coming from um his surround speakers and his surround backs and those matching um is definitely a big benefit because you kind of want the the sound stage to be as equally balanced as it is in the front to the back now that i said that those speakers use dual six and a half inch drivers and dual tweeters um it's it's very close very, very close to what this, the front stage sounds like. Um, the Atmos speakers, on the other hand, um, were pretty much balancing with the speakers pretty well. Uh, I, I got to give it to him. Um, you know, him using the Marantz 7705, I believe is what it is, uh, going into the monolith uh, amplifier. Uh, phenomenal sound. Um, Guys, I know I've I've built a 7.1 home theater, and I, I can't even do anything close to what Michael even has. Those speakers blew me out of the water. And, wow, 
not being a big fan of clips, they they kind of kind of got me turned back on to him a little bit, especially the fact that yeah, you know, like I told him, I I said honestly, you know, the movie theater up the street has clips, and I wasn't a fan of the sound. I've never been, but you know, being able to go over to his his home theater and hearing what Odyssey has done to those you know the speakers, I don't even know what they sound like directly, but regardless, doesn't matter. The La Scala sound phenomenal. Guys, actually, that's the first time I've ever heard La Scala. And I will be back over to his house. And you guys, you know, hopefully somewhere in the near future, you might see us, you know, do a video together. Um, just, just I want to help him out, you know, just kind of just be a different person to give my, my thoughts and opinion on it. And again, I am a very um, just kind of live, like kind of, person and that's why clips would kind of be in a uh, of a ideal company for me um but when it came to the subwoofers guys some people are worried about uh anything larger than either a 10 or a 12 pushing out anything below you know 40 hertz and some people say it's not possible well that's not true it is very possible. Actually, those dual 18s that he has in his room right now, uh, in room response is down to 10 hertz, and that's insane, guys. Um, but even with the JTRs, uh, with the clips, it was very well balanced, uh, just throughout the room. And uh, I, I see what he what he's been talking about in his videos. Uh, why it's important, guys, to not just buy one subwoofer. You want to buy multiples and you kind of want to uh, just stretch them out a little bit. Uh, in his room, what I heard was very, um, very well balanced sound overall. I can't really explain it any other kind of way, guys. I sat in the back recliner. The bass was as even as it was in the official, what I call the official youth man reviews uh or his spot anyway um the sound was incredible and what i like in that room especially because he uses the uh, seymour screen um with those speakers behind it it doesn't matter where you are in that room guys i'm telling you uh i know that there's you know six seats in there you know you can sit wherever you want whether if you're left, center, right, back, center, right, doesn't matter. The sound is very balanced. Now, like he pointed out, um, if you sit in the back, you do not want to be up against the wall, guys. You will not get proper uh, Dolby Atmos effects. Um, if you want to get Dolby Atmos in a proper way, you kind of have to be up in the front where he sits, up in the center, so you can hear, you know, the two Dolby Atmos speakers here and hear the ones back here on the back walls and also feeling the, um, or hearing the, the, uh, the, the surrounds and the back surrounds. And guys, my thoughts on his, on his room are, I can't even explain it to you guys. Um, it's incredible. Uh, if, if you guys do, uh, ever, hear anything like it i'm pretty sure you'd be amazed um the woodwork that the guy done for his his movie room is just it's incredible guys it's clean it's neat it's tidy um many different light options you know the, the blue lights that you see uh when he does his reviews behind the screen just looks incredible but guys when you're there in person i'm telling you when you are there in person versus what you hear on the microphones are going to be two completely different things. And I've been following Mike around almost, I can't really say once he started, that's, that would be a lie because I started following him in early 2018. Um, so yeah, no, about two years. Yeah, no, it is two years. Yeah. So it's 2020. Yeah. Time flies. But anyway, guys, um, so since he, he has the, the Marantz, um, especially using Odyssey, because I know that they use XT32, um, going from 
a receiver into a processor from that processor going into a dedicated amplifier guys it's a different kind of beast uh and that being said i think that's why michael is actually getting such a huge huge sound stage and just a properly well balanced sound stage and with the speakers that he has they're not cheap and because they're not cheap they don't deserve a, a cheap uh receiver they don't they don't deserve to be on a cheap uh amplifier because it's just it's not gonna balance out well with those speakers it won't uh, what I do like Klipsch, uh, or what I do like about Klipsch is they're very straight to the point uh, sounding speakers. And, you know, what you put on them is what those speakers are going to give back to you. And that's why I think Michael can actually rest easy when he watches movies in there. Because it is just phenomenal on what those speakers sound like. I mean, I come home and I listen to these. And these things sound like they're playing in a garbage can somewhere. But, you know what? I can't really compare the two because these are entirely different beasts and they're not bad at all. So, you know, we'll talk about this on a different video and I'll send that into Michael. And, you know, um, when we, you know, get our house together, I have Mike come on over, um, you know, let him do his his uh, review on our home theater and, you know, I look forward to, to working with him and, you know, just be good friends. You know, he's, he's an awesome guy, guys. And um, I hope that you guys find his uh, content worth uh, watching. It really is. So, um, anyway, guys, that's, that's my opinion on it. Uh, I guess I can talk about the Valencia seating. Uh, since we already talked about the speakers and the screen, um, very comfortable. I was pleased. I've guys, I've been to plenty of movie theaters with recliners, never been that comfortable. Uh, the only thing that I will uh, gripe about is even something that he pointed out is when you go and lift the seats up, the light kind of gets onto the screen, guys, and that's kind of distracting. Um, so that's that's you know it's something small. That's no big deal though. Uh, easy fix. But anyway, uh, besides that, one thing, the projector, because uh, I know he does have an Epson. It's not native 4K. Um, so it's definitely not going to give out the quality picture that the Sony does. Um, but again, those are two entirely different projectors. But from what I've seen uh, on his Seymour screen, it looks phenomenal. Uh, very, very clear looking picture. I noticed that the color wasn't 100% there like it was on a Sony, but that doesn't matter, guys. Um, you know, the Epson, it looks clear. Um, actually, to me, with the Epsons, they kind of look more realistic. Sony, to me, kind of boosts things up a little bit. It's like the color's a little bit too much. So I think I'd rather own something like his Epson. And that being said, the colors, it's, it's not overwhelming, right? It's not distracting. Um, it's, it's just it, a huge picture with the huge sound behind the screen guys and just the impact, the bass, it's just right there. Uh, no matter where you sit, it just, it sounds great. You know, to me, what I heard, I've not heard anything like it guys. I can't even afford anything that would even come close to what his his uh, speakers would sound like. I mean, man, that's one man's dream right there. But anyways, guys, you guys be blessed and uh, see you guys on the next one.